Namaste everyone. Good morning. I wish you enjoyed my previous uh, videos. I'm making a slow, regular yoga pattern today. In this, we will be doing Surya Namaskar. Um, but it, previous video was a little bit fast, so I'm we're gonna do a workout video, slow, comfortable, understanding postures. We're gonna try to stay as much as we can, and in the end, the, uh, some inversions and follow Shavasana. So let's enjoy this practice. Sit in any comfortable position. I'm sitting in lotus. You can sit in any comfortable position. It could be butterfly. It could be uh, any any position in which you want to, or you sit on a block, as we explained in previous videos. And let's join your hands in Namaste. Close your eyes. Enjoying your present time. Easy inhalation, exhalation. Take a deep breath. Release your shoulders, release your throat, release your face, your forehead, your eyebrows. Bringing your awareness into the present time. Bringing your awareness here within the body. We'll chant OM together three times. Inhale. Regards to your God and to Mother Earth, send up your hands, press them on your eyes, and relax your hands very slowly. We'll be doing a Kapalabhati small round, Vastrika small round, and then some standing position. So breathing sometimes is a good warm up for the lungs. So we'll be following, following with that. So you're gonna try one round, not a bigger one. You're gonna pull your belly in while breathing out. for a while then inhale whenever you want to next is uh, Bastika we will be doing it so uh, rest your hands on your ribcage lower ribcage try to expand your lungs and forceful breathing out, contract your lungs. Complete breath out. Throw all the residual volume of your um, lungs, throw all the air which was stored before, clean it complete. So you are holding your breath out and then maximum inhale, fill it with the fresh air and hold your breath. Those who want uh, to perform the locks, they can. And then breathe out and relax. Normal inhalation. Just 
slowly open your eyes and watch me. Interlock your fingers and stretch your arms forward. Then inhale and arms close up with the inhalation. Stretch your both the arms, pull your arms to your shoulders. And then breathing out, bending forward as comfortable as you can. Try not to lift your hip. And then just bringing your forehead down, being comfortable, be relaxed. Two, three normal breathing here. The next inhalation coming up. Inhale, arms up. And then exhale and relax. You can interlock your fingers behind your back. Open your chest. Chest expansion with the inhalation. And then forward bending again. Again, two, three normal breathe here. Then inhale and come back. Relaxing your arms. Twisting to your left side. So right hand coming on your left knee. Left hand going behind, maybe on the fingertips. You pull your ribs a little bit out, chest expansion. And then with the exhalation, you twist in one axis. Don't lean back. Or don't tilt to the side. It's just a simple twist in the same axis. Look back. Then inhale, arms up one time. Exhale on opposite side. And then coming back. Pressing your hands on the both the knees. One more time, you're gonna twist. Only the left hand will go behind, right hand gonna be same there. Lock your elbow and then you twist. Then coming back, resting your left hand on um, left knee, right hand goes behind and then you twist. And then come. Release your arms, release your legs. Just relax your legs, being after sitting, maybe knees up and down. Just um, one more warming up before the Surya Namaskar. It's a simple Pashmuttanasana and Purvottanasana in a sequence. So you're gonna spread your legs into the side, then inhale, arms up. Easy forward bend. So breathing out, simple movement, how much just allowing your body to go, not to push your body as we are just warming up. We are just starting the session, so easy. Then inhale, coming up. Lower your hands behind for the Purvottanasana. What the hand position could be, because you, if you touch your hands and then rest your elbows, so when the elbows are reaching, there if you rest your hands, it will be easy for us to perform the Purvottanasana. And then you're going to press your hands, inhale, engage your glutes, engage your calves, engage your heels, you roll back your shoulders, triceps has to be well engaged, and then you're going up, and then coming down. So this will follow in a rhythm of breathe and momentum. So inhale, arms up, exhale, forward bending, inhale, coming up. Exhale, resting your hands behind, open chest, next inhalation, hips up, you can drop your head back. If you have a vertigo or any uncomfort in the neck, keep your chin uh, tucked towards the chest, don't drop it back. So that could be uncomfortable, breathing out and down, one more round, then inhale, exhale. Just be in the momentum. Be within the body, feel what's happening. Inhale and coming up. And relax your hands down, exhale. Then roll back your shoulders. Inhale and you go up, open chest. And then exhale and down. Then you both the legs, coming up in slowly. You can be in sitting squat, it could be very hard for you. So take a hand support and coming up in standing position. Padhasthasana and then slowly softening your knees and coming up in standing position. Now we'll follow the Surya Nushkar. Stepping forward on your mat. 
hands in many state. Observe yourself. So your feet should be parallel. Inner arch of the foot actively pressing it. It's not that only the heels or only the toes are taking body weight. Your inner arch of the foot should be very well pressing. Palms pushing. So basically this is the Surya Namaskar's first position. That you're rolling back your shoulders. You're pushing your palms. Palms pressing each other. Thumbs touching near the heart. And almost four arms parallel to one line. So this is the position if you can. And then you observe that you are going within the self. You can do all the positions with your closed eyes as I am giving a good command. So you can watch me with the first round and then followed with the closed eyes because going within the self is the best thing to be done. And that is the position. That's the aim of yoga. Observing your body, detaching your mind from any other activities and thoughts. So the first position is Urdhva Hastasana, standing upward bending and which is the inhalation and going backward bending from the chest the most. And then forward bending Padrahastasana. Knee to chest position. You just going down forward. Bringing your hands in line with the feet. Not forward, not behind. Almost there. If you cannot reach, just the fingertips are fine. But don't hunch a lot. Aim to uh, lift your glutes. Aim to stretch your hamstrings and glutes. And then be there. This is also fine. You can take a blocks if you want to. Someone might be very stiff, not able to reach there, which is also okay if you do that or you reach here. Then you soften your knees, rest your hands, and then left leg goes behind. Ashwasanchalanasana. Leg extension position. Start extending your back leg and pushing your hips down at the same time. So you're performing a Hip flexor stretch, you are performing the right glutes work, your arms are active, chest expansion, chin up. This is an inhale position. Then you inhale, retain your breath and go for the plank. Your feet together, arms active, chest slightly expand, don't drop your hip. The knees down, chest in between the hands or not before it. And forehead down, eight limbs on the floor, Ashtanga Pranam, eight parts on the floor. Then you go for very active hips. Your inner thighs has to be squeezed and very active before you go for cobra. And then roll back your shoulders. You can be in a half cobra, especially in first position. If you're too flexible, then you can complete it. But first preference is half. Roll back, engage and observe your back muscles. Looking in front, don't look so much up because it can tense your neck. Toes can be extended if you want to, but all the case, your glutes, your hips has to be squeezed and active. Imagine there's a block here and you're squeezing that block. Then first round, Shashankasana I like, so stay there. Keeping your hands in the same position, stretch back and forehead resting down. And then from there, come up on kneeling down position, inhale. And then go for the mountain position, exhale. Your biceps are in line with the ears. Stretching your hamstrings, your hip. Normal breathe, observe. You don't have to shift your feet forward in order to touch your heels if your heels are not touching. It's perfectly fine even if you don't touch. But do not readjust. As soon as you readjust, alignment may go wrong. And hip shouldn't be down. Your upper back should not be the peak. The sitting bones. The hips should be the peak of the mountain. Then same leg, you bring it forward, pushing your hips down, pressing your palms, open your chest. Then right leg coming forward, head coming to the knees if you can, then inhale and coming up. Backward bending, and a mistake. This will follow with a breathe, uh, breathe rhythm. Inhale. Upper backward bending, exhale forward bending, this time right leg goes behind, inhale, retain your breath, hold your breath here in the plank, the knees, chest and forehead down, cobra, inhale, active roll back shoulders, don't do that, 
mountain breathing out exhale maybe hold your breath out for a few seconds if you can then right leg comes forward inhale exhale inhale and coming up and slowly stay continue purva hastasana pad hastasana forward bending left leg behind breathe in plank retain your breath and then go down knees chest and forehead here you exhale then you inhale exhale left leg forward breathe in other leg forward breathe out inhale coming up and then namaste follow the breath whenever you're going towards the gravity you're breathing out whenever you're doing away from the gravity you're breathing in so first is upward backward bending inhale go down towards the mother earth breathe out now expansion right foot behind chest going slightly up inhale in a plank it's a stable isometric position so you're holding your breath in then go down breathe out breathe in going upward open chest breathing out chest going down right leg coming forward inhale open chest other leg forward exhale inhale coming up and then stay let's do one more round Urdhva Hastasana, maximum stretch in each step, forward bending, from here close your eyes, left leg behind, normal breath, stay here, observe your body, observe your right hip, your left hip groin, open your chest, and then plank, normal breath, inhale, retain your breath now, right foot goes behind, the knees chest and forehead comes down breathe out then inhale cobra back extension engaging your hip then mountain and this time we'll stay in mountain with the normal breathe observe that your calves are stretched your hamstrings are stretched your glutes stretched back has expand very well extension so spine is trying to be straightened up extension of your lengthening your spine basically pressing your palms very well and staying here observing those whose heels are easily touching they can lift and curl the toes up and a normal breathe and then bring your left leg forward inhale And then other leg forward, exhale, stay here, maybe bring your hands to the calves, pulling your chest in, or bringing your forehead completely closer, then open your eyes, slowly with awareness, inhale and come up, backward bending, and then namaste, then relax your hands, flex apart, Observe this warm body. Your joints might be warm, muscles are warm. If you're a very regular practitioner, you might feel very good. Few may can feel exhausted as this is a Siranamashkar is a good complex of asanas. So those who are very beginners or very stiff, it can make you feel very warm, which is fine to do. But then Observe your body. Another few more breath, just to detach. Again, by chance, any thoughts have been attached to any object. Bring your awareness back within the body. Show this to be easy. And then open your eyes. We'll be starting the asana sequence. Tadasana, we will be starting with. Bring your feet together. 
and interlock your fingers, stretch your hands down and just simply first start active your uh, arms up, raise them up, shoulders active, elbows straight, don't bend your elbows, elbows straight, open the chest, roll back your shoulders a little bit so your neck should not be tense, start getting active from the hips, you're squeezing your glutes, active from the hips and then start lifting your heels up, get active from the toe to the fingers, whole body, you're just completely stretching yourself and breathing normal, staying there, observing your position, holding the pose to understand, let the muscle have a memory of this stretch, the mind understand what we are doing, breathe, 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 don't tense your face, don't tense your forehead, normal inhalation and exhalation, Then slowly bringing your heels down, slowly bringing your arms down, relaxing your hands, relaxing your arms, shoulders to be released. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, release, then open your eyes. We'll be doing chair position one time, I'm just showing from the side. So what you have to do is, do not let your knee to cross the toe line. It's very important not to cross because then the body weight will go on the knees. So stretch your arms forward, let's sit together, breathe in, dropping your hip down behind, hip popping back, not forward. You should be able to see your toes over the knee line. So dropping down till there and then now arms come in line with the ears. Stay there with the normal breathe and observe. Five breath. Minimum holding the 10 seconds, 15 seconds is good. Exercise physiology says if you stay more than 15 seconds, then the uh, permanent impression happens on that muscle. Then muscle stay or and joint takes the memory of holding it, and then you get some more benefit. Then start coming up straight. Inhale, exhale, lower your arms. Roll back your shoulders, some Skititarasana for a while. Close your eyes, take a deep breath. And breathing out. Open your eyes. Step forward on your mat. We'll be doing a Trikonasana and Parigrata Trikonasana. It's an open hip and closed hip position. Before I go ahead, I would like to explain the open hip position. All the side movements. So, normally we can make kind of like heel to the ankle, so this kind of making a back T you can say or heel to heel those who are following Ashtanga, it could be done in that way too. Basically that means all the open hip position, the back hip should point to the horizontal line, front hip is pointing in that way, also followed with the legs position, left toe point in the side horizontal, right following to the front. So make it here and length of your leg should be the gap of your feet, don't take a less gap. Because if you take a less gap, your hip might pop out like that, which we don't want to do. So length of your leg should be the gap of your feet. Open your hip very well. Left leg going behind, opening your left leg behind and then stretch your arms into the side. Just to do the better position, you can roll and palms facing up. Roll back, so chest expansion and roll shoulder will happen. And now just turn your forearms. So you'll have a very stable, good position. No over extension on the front knee. Press your front big toe and inner arch of the front foot. Don't let your back toe go behind, slightly forward. Maybe slightly in is better. Then stretch, inhale. Don't let your hip pop out. Keep your back hip, front foot very active. And then coming down either on the shin. Left shoulder has to come up very well. Or on the ankle if you're flexible. Or those who are fine, they go in front and then stay there. Theory is to go behind, that's also not, uh, so, but what happens when you follow the theory, your upper shoulder starts falling out. In, so I want you to press your hands, push your elbow to the shin bone. When you push it, it helps you to open up your chest. Engage very well, do not let the hip to be dropped. Stretch, and then you can look up. That's the theory, but if anyone feels uncomfortable looking up, look down, normally breathe, 
stay for some more time. Hand is taking us weight, supporting a body weight, but almost like your legs are more stronger. Legs, it's like even if you do without touching, you should be able to do. It's not that you're completely dropping. And both the shoulder blades are yet open as the same. Then you inhale, coming back. Relax your arms. Face to the front, to the right side. Then bring your left leg slowly forward. The way you go back, same way, it's good to come back. Now we take a right side, so right leg behind. You can make a small, small steps to reach in good position. Open your hip. Now you can work from back that it shouldn't be dropped hip. It's an open hip position. You're well open. Your both the legs are well engaged and active. Inner arch of the front foot, left big toe in uh, present say scenario, and your right heel. They should be very active. Open up your chest completely to the right side. Stretch your arms. Rotate your palms upward. So let the shoulders to be active. Then turn your palms only facing down. Don't let the whole shoulder rotate. Just expansion remain, just turn your wrist, look into the left side, inhale, and then with the exhalation, you go down, keeping your chest open. Right arm, right shoulder pulling up, then maybe on the ankle, or maybe on the floor. And then just try to push, very well, opening your chest, observing your posture. Breathe, breathe, deeper inhalation and exhalation. Breathe. Good, coming back. Inhale. Relax your arms. Shoulders to be relaxed. Turn your hip facing in. And the right leg coming forward. Normal your inhale. Roll back your shoulders. Samastha Kutarasana. Close your eyes. Take two, three deep breaths. Inhale, exhale, with each exhalation, relax your throat, relax your face, observe your body. Then open your eyes. Now we'll do Paribhatta Trikonasana. Again, we're going to take a left leg behind, but we're going to keep it heel to heel and almost it's like a V position. Uh, previously we did a kind of L or T, now we're going to take a V position, so heel to heel, it could be slightly aside, it's fine, the left leg behind, again length of your leg should be the gap of your feet, left hip should not point out this time, if your leg is outside, your hip will be pointing this side and you will be struggling any of the position to perform, If you because your pelvis is facing this side, you cannot twist, so if that is very hard, you can even lift your left heel, in order to turn the pelvis. It's a close hip position, should be making close hip. Your both the hips should be pointing front, your sternum pointing front. It shouldn't be into the side. So staying there, observing that position. Keep your both hands on your waistline. And then left arm up, inhale. Stretch, push your back heel, turn and twist. And then bringing your left hand first into the same side. You can take a block if you're not reaching. Or finally, is outside. Both are fine. Don't raise your arm immediately first. First, you achieve the roll back twisting. Roll back your shoulder, achieve this twist, and then you raise your arm up. It's very important. If I do like this, it's just totally wrong position. Your upper shoulder has to go back. Chest expansion. Now your sternum is pointing to the side, and then you can do that. Same side is fine if you're too much struggling with the balance to do the opposite side. Then bring your right hand on your waistline again, look down, and then inhale, arms up, left arm up from the front, and relax your hand. Slowly, left leg, coming forward. Take a deep breath, release, same thing we go from the right side. Right hip turning in, right heel pushing back, both legs are straight. Front foot's inner toe. I mean, inner arch of the front foot and the big toe should be always, it's don't lift the toe. Don't put your body weight on the heel. That's too wrong. That's why many people's ankles starts hurting after some positions. Right hip turning in. Left hand on your waistline. Right arm stretch up, inhale. 
face to the left side first. So now sternum, in beginning it was pointing front, now it should point to the left complete. And then you go down. Once you're going down, right hand either in the same side if you want to, or opposite side. You press it, open the chest, let the left shoulder lifts up, and then left arm going up. Breathe, observe, stretch, and feel. Keep breathing. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Breathe. Then come back, bring your hand to the waistline. And then from there you inhale, coming up, stretch your arm. Both hands up, relax and back leg forward. Taking your time. Sit in a Vajrasana. Take your time. Sit in the Vajrasana and close your eyes for a few moments. Observe the Surya Namaskar you did. Four standing positions you did. We did Tadasana, Chair Position, Utkatasana. We did the side angle position, the Trigonasana, the triangle position, and the reverse, the Paribratta. Keeping your eyes closed, standing position. And breathe. Slowly open your eyes. There are four steps. I want you to start with the Supta Vajrasana, though it could be harder. If it is harder, you can take a block to sit down. Otherwise, it's fine not to do it. If someone has uncomfort in the knee, the Vajrasana could be harder. Don't perform that. You can avoid extension of your legs and you can just sit for a while. In spite of doing Supta Vajrasana, you can go back to the Purvottanasana, what we did in the beginning. Right now, we are doing Supta Vajrasana. Come slightly forward on your mat. Then you keep, those who are advanced, they can keep your heels together. If someone is advanced, the heels together is the final position to be done. And then you're here. Then first position is you rest your hands, open the chest. Remember each position from beginning to a, a complete is a complete position itself. So there's no matter that, oh, if you complete the position, then only you will get a benefit you get a benefit from here also. Engagement of the muscles and your mind is all what we need. Second position, you try to rest your elbows if you can. You can stay here. Most of us feel staying here. They cannot go more down, so it's fine. You can just stay here and drop your head if you don't have a vertigo or if you don't have uncomfort in the neck. Then the third position is shifting your elbows towards the feet and with the open chest resting your head. can stay here or in the last you drop your shoulders back then you can stretch your arms up so the vajrasana complete or even you can hold your elbows you can stay here even those you can stay here and breathe those who are more advanced they can bring their hands beside the shoulders like how you perform the bridge or weave chakrasana then you start pushing your hands and lifting your hip up then resting your head closer to the feet and then resting your forearms, grab your heels or toes if you can and then staying there. Any of the position out of these four five, you can choose your comfort to stay. From here, this is the best way to stay. You can just be in this position. Start coming back, lower your hands, bring your hands under the shin. So lift your knees a little bit, bring your fingers under the shin, then push your elbows to lift your chest up. Then shift your elbows behind to go in previous position and then shift your hands behind to come up in beginning position and child pose. In Balasana, you bend forward, hands remain there, drop your shoulders, drop your head and drop your elbows. A counter position. Counter postures are very important for us to do, especially any major backward bending demands the counter. In a session, we are holding the position, but if someone wants to come back, 
choose to come back a little earlier and stay more in counter position to follow the full pattern. Surrender your spine, surrender your neck, relax your low back. Then inhale and turn back. Relax your arms, shoulders to be released, and then extension of your legs. Coming back one by one, you open up. Normally, you breathe. Easy breathe. Today, we will be doing another sitting position. Is a Janushirasana series. So, Janushirasana, Parivrutta Janushirasana. We're going to bend our uh, right leg first. Move it aside. We'll stretch our left hamstring. So, right foot is, you can see, it's almost like I'm making an L. Your knee and hip in line. And your heel is closer to the perineum, foot is touching the inner thigh. So almost this position and sternum, now you have to face front. So sternum turning to the front foot. Front foot is engaged, knee is actively pushing down, foot is flexed in. Then you inhale and arms up. We stay in like 25-30% position, percent of the position means maybe staying half, don't complete it. So bend from the pelvis first and stay. In fact, in, in spite of hunch, open the chest, lengthen your spine, stretch more. Those who are beginners, they can stay here, perfectly fine to stay. Those who are fine to go forward, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching. And then you reach to the foot. Then you can rest your both the elbows down, so you can see either shoulder is not up. We shouldn't be trying this. So in uh, order to do the symmetrical movement, your both elbows should be reaching to the floor and that also helps your sternum to look front and then staying here pull your foot very well more lengthening your spine more stretch and then drop your head you shouldn't be forcing your head to it's a knee to chest head to knee pose so janushirasana but you don't have to bring it if you're not flexible from here if your lumbar is flexible then you reach down so don't force even if you're not able to reach you rest your hands and then you can try this and you can stay here. You can take a belt to perform if you want to. Just staying here, breathe. Those are more advanced, very easily reaching. Now you can start moving your elbows upward to the sky. And then stay in the position. Breathe. Your nerves should not tense. We are stretching the muscles. Don't tense your nerves. Don't touch your forehead. Don't stop breathing. Deep inhalation is a main aim to perform. Then inhale chin up first. Stretch your arms. Coming back to the straight. And relax your arms. Release your spine. Release your head. Slightly move your knee outside. We will also perform Parivrata uh, Parshokonasana. What we will do it. We will uh, hold the right knee. We're going to twist first. Twist as much as you can. This leg is active. Left leg is active. Knee is pushing down. You twist and then you stretch your right arm up. Inhale. Inhale. You stretch. Then breathe in. And lean your left shoulder before the left knee to the floor. And then you reach to the left foot from the outside. It helps you to do the good open chest. Previously we rested the forehead. Now we are trying to rest back of your head and then you stay once you stay here once you reach and achieve then you can bring your left hand forward to reach to the foot and open chest again you breathe it might be very hard for few so you can just stay here and this itself is fine grabbing the foot is not only the aim it is just a position to be engaged from the side now inhale and come back, relax your arms, release your shoulders, normally you breathe. Stay there one more time, more open knee outward and now we're going to bend forward simple and between the knees towards the ankle line, bend forward without lifting, normally left hip starts coming up, so just try not to and then forehead down, hips down, stretch. Observe and feel. Easy breathe. And then start to 
ಅಂದರೆ ಗಳಿಸ್ಬೋದು ಅದು ರೈಟ್ ಲೆಗ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರೆತ್ ನಾವು ಇದು ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಬೆನ್ ಯು ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ನೀ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ನೀ ಬೆನ್ ಯು ಕನ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಚ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ ಇನ್ಹೇಲ್ ಆರ್ಮ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಿಲ್ ಹಾಫ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಬೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಲೆಂದನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸ್ಪೈನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಓಪನ್ ಚೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫುಲ್ ಯುವರ್ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಪುಷ್ ಯುವರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಲೆಗ್ ಮೋರ್ ರೈಟ್ ನೀ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆಕ್ಟಿವ್ಲಿ ಪುಷಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ರೈಟ್ ಫುಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಹೆಲೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಲೇಷನ್ ಯು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ರೀಚ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದೇರ್ ಗ್ರಾಬ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫುಟ್ ಏಮ್ ಟು ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಯು ಬೋತ್ ದ ಎಲ್ಬೋಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಚೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ರೈಟ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಯು ಬೋತ್ ದ ಶೋಲ್ಡರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಲೈನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಫೋರ್ ಹೆಡ್ breathe and stay you might not reach that much so this is even fine if you're not reaching so down don't curl your head you can lift your chin up this is fine to be there lengthening your spine is more effective stretch than curling your upper back keeping this if you can go down it'd be nice to do stay for a few more breath those who are complete in advance start lifting your elbows up move it complete and roll your elbows chin up in hand start stretching your arms up and then relax pare prata jano shirasana left knee slightly more out turn left side grab your left knee with the right hand to perform the good twist same thing what we did uh, for the previous time with the left heel hamstring stretch now we are doing right hamstring stretch stretch your left arm from the uh, side pull up very well then inhale and breathe what you can watch me from the side it should be plank not like drop or hunch it should be straight open chest and then bending side bending it's a side bend position to be done leaning your shoulder before the knee and then going down opening up opening up opening up bringing your head down towards the knee and then right hand comes to grab the foot also staying there breathe opening your chest as much as you can you can do how much you reach as i explained before even if you do just this much into the side is fine even if you just grab the front ankle and stay here it's also fine start coming back very slowly flexing your arms moving your left knee a little bit more out and then bending in between the knees so what we just did into the side same thing we are doing in this way and between your knees you move forward without lifting your right hip lean and lower your chest down if you can and then stay with a few normal breath these inhalations and exhalations you stay there observe that your right hip should and lift up just in there and staying in position breathe then start coming up in chant take a butterfly for a while and then just stay there grab your feet pulling your knees down whatever position maybe you reach here is fine move your knees up and down few time and then reach each movement you pushing them down and then stay there pushing your knees roll back your shoulders open your chest close your eyes you have a stable feelings feelings of stability symmetry very much good focus muscles are getting stretched joints are getting stretched and getting in full, uh, achieving their own range of motion so they feel good still sometime you might feel uh, the muscles they can give you a feel of tiredness you observe them observe them non reaction is a key once you observe they'll get into the relaxation in any position they can relax whether it is a stretch or hard position or like a shavasana the navasana 
you're gonna be here. Roll back your shoulders, you're sitting on your hips, lifting your feet up. Just balance, keeping your spine almost straight. No hunch. Just stand there and first you can try a lower leg parallel to the floor and the knees coming closer to the chest. Roll back shoulders and arms in line. So this could be the beginning of the Navasana. Your knees should not fall apart. Knees are together. And then keeping your knees together, you can extend your legs. Foot can be flexed in and then you stay. Easy breathe. Observe. No hunch. No roll back. I mean, it's fine even if you roll back. Don't balance on the sacrum. If you balance on the sacrum, it's easy. Nothing happens. You have to balance on the sitting bones by lifting your chest. And then slowly relax. Take your time. Slowly with the hand support, you lay down on your spine. And give a minute just to observe your body. Comfortable inhalations and exhalations. Easy in your breathe. Easy in your inhalation and exhalation and just relax and drop your shoulders. And then now we will be starting the lying positions on the back. Today we'll, I'm choosing only the back laying down position, no belly. Next video we may be doing it. The belly position. First is a simple Setu Bandhasana. I want you to bend your legs till your heels coming closer to the fingertips. You can watch my feet, not more than that. Don't bring them closer than that, just staying here. And then we're going to engage the feet and thigh. Your glutes, your thighs. Has to be well engaged your feet has to be well engaged you can use even forearms to press so this is going to be same then you're going to inhale press your feet press your forearms even lift your hip up why i ask you to keep your heels a little bit away from the hip because if you keep it closer this happens and the knees are uncomfortable lower back is uncomfortable so you can perform that and stay there while holding a little bit more, push your thighs more strong, let your hip bone go more higher up, as high as you can, till your chest comes and touches the chin. In the end, you interlock your fingers, more open the chest, more open your shoulders. And then you can stay here and continuous engagement of your knees and thighs. If you still your knees are uncomfortable or lower back is, I mean normally this is very good for the lower back, but if any uncomfort then you can come down. Still, if you want to readjust, if your knees are not comfortable, keep your feet more further away from the hip. And you can try that. Stay some more time. Then slowly relax. Both legs straight down first and then up an asana from the left leg. Now hug your left knee to the chest. If you're fine with the neck, bring your head up, nose, chin or forehead closer to the left knee. Release your lower back by doing it. Glutes, keep you relaxed. Then relax your head, relax down and then you change. Opposite leg, hug it very well. You might reach here, which is fine. Our groins are very tight and tense sometimes. When you feel uncomfort, then you can stay here. No need to push a lot in one very one first day. Depending on the practice, every day we improve. Bringing your forehead up in the end would be the option, not compulsory though. Those who feel any uncomfort in the neck, immediately rest your head. No need to tense your neck. And then slowly relax. Next is the option whether you can do Setu Bandhasana again, which is the same thing because some of us cannot do the Chakrasana. So I'm choosing the wheel posture or some people also call it full bridge. Your hands comes under the shoulders. This itself needs a complete teaching and very long explanations. So I might make a new video maybe just for the Chakrasana. But right now we are going in the flow. So we will just try. If you can, it's fine. If you cannot, go back to the Setu Bandhasana, the previous position. 
You bring your feet closer to the hip, then you press your hands under the shoulders. Start the engagement of your feet and of your hands. Then thighs and triceps together to go up. It might be hard to go up. You may be not able to or very easily you might be able to. All positions are fine. Don't get tense. No pressure of performance. You can choose easy position. You can always go back to the Setu Bandhasana and it's perfectly fine. It's a matter of improvement of every day, not just a matter of one day practice. Those who are fine, if they want to challenge themselves, if they are easy in Chakrasana, one hand could be the possibility of doing it. Or one leg up could be the second possibility of doing it. And slowly come down. And now we perform Apanasana. Now hug your both the knees to the chest. Neck to be relaxed first. Hugging your knees to the chest very well. Observe. It's always very good to do the twistings after the major backward bending. So we're going to follow the two kind of twistings. First I want, again heels down closer to the hip. But mat width apart. So nearly uh, the side of the mat to so that much extends. Hands could be aside. If you have less space around you, you can also perform. Hands under the head. But this is also, and, and this is very good position too. Kind of L shape. Uh, in the elbows 90 degree. Then, drop your both the knees to the one side. Chin goes to the opposite side. Stay here. Aim to push your right knee down to the floor at this time. And uh, the left foot can rest on the right knee in order to support. Breathe because this is a very good time. Your psoas gets a stretch by this position. And it's very good for the hip. Then coming back very slowly. Bring your legs in back position, then change opposite side, dropping your both the knees to the right side. Don't bring your feet closer to each other, they're gonna be the same in the same apart. Right foot resting on the left knee, and then stay. Chin moves to the left side. Aim, bring your left shoulder, left wrist almost in line if you're making a hand straight. Observe, feel, stretch. Coming back very slowly. Both legs straight down this time. Second twist is a one leg twist. So you can do it just yourself. Hands again into the side. When your right knee, right foot on your left thigh. It's resting on the thigh and pressing it slightly. Don't let your left leg follow the twist. Left leg is straight down. Then you push your right foot on the left thigh. And then you're going to twist. You can use your left hand on the right knee. And then you twist. Look to the right side. Ideally, your right shoulder remain down, and then you twist. It's it shouldn't be like that. So if the shoulder is lifting, don't touch this knee down. That's fine. Ideally, my right ear, right shoulder, and then right knee. They all should be on the floor. And come back. And then you change left foot on the right thigh this time. You're twisting to the right side, looking to the left side, using your hand support, and then we deeper inhalation and exhalation. Then coming back, relax your leg and do the Sopta Tadasana. Leg straight, arms up, active stretch your whole body. Active stretch and relax your arms. Last asana sequence is 
Sarvangasana cycle. So we'll do Tanpadasana first. Press your palms beside your body. Prepare yourself. Take your time. And then push your hands down. Lift your legs slightly up till you can see your feet. And hold there for a while. Let your core get stronger. Let your back get stronger. Let your thighs, your legs get stronger. Let the inversion starts improving the blood circulation. So not immediate head rush if you do straight inversion. So this hold, holds us very well. Then 90 degree and stay for a while again. Normal degree. Then you push your hands down to the floor and go into the half halasana. Adjust yourself, staying there. Then give your hand support to the lower back. Hand support to the lower back and then start lifting your legs to the sky. You might reach here which is fine, but don't tense your neck. Your neck should not be tense doing Siramangasana. You don't try to straighten up too much like that. It could be uncomfortable. So depending on your practice, depending on your uh, regularity of the practice and flexibility, you choose a complete position. Second thing to be observed that your elbows should not be too out. If they are out, you can't go up or you will fall always. So, or if, um, keep staying there, but if someone is not able to go from there, they can go from Setubandhasana. They go Setubandhasana, they support. Uh, um, bring your hands under the hip, then one leg up, other leg up, and then you reach just. You can stay here some more time. Those who are already know some variation, they can perform. Those who are advanced, you can perform Nira Lamba Sarvangasana. But that's fine, no need to uh, forcefully do any position. Ankles should not be tense, they should be relaxed. Toes slightly pulling up, but ankles relaxed. Those who have any hypertension, high blood pressure, any heart disease, they should be avoiding Sarvangasana because it can create any pressure. Those who have a cervical spondylitis, they should be avoiding this too because it's curling the head. Though if you do right way, I'll explain it, they can do also with the blankets, but this time you're doing a hatha way. So we stay here for a while. Then go into the Halasana by not rounding your spine. Spine almost straight. Spine almost straight. Then interlock your fingers. You can push them down and then stay. Halasana is a very good position to stay. It gives them many benefits, including your digestive system and nervous system. The easy way of Karnapitasana is together you drop them on forehead. This is the easy way of doing Karnapitasana. Those who are fine, regular, flexible, no uncomfort in the neck and back will slide the knee beside your ears. And knees touching the ground beside the ears and then you can stay here. Choose your position. If you are uncomfortable, you can anytime come back. And then you can anytime be in Halasana. Now from Halasana, open your hands. Go in Halasana, plow position. From the plow position, you open your hands and roll your spine one by one. Use your core to come back. Strength of your abdomen, strength of your back, your core muscles. Don't lift your head. Head has to be down. And then straighten up. Then stay here. There are two fish positions I will explain. One is finding fish is the proper is with the lotus. You perform the lotus, you grab your feet, you pull them, you push your knees down, you push your elbows to lift your chest, and then elbows are pushing, knees are pushing down, and then you're lifting your chest as much as you can, your top of the head is resting on the floor. But as the lotus is not so much possible with the everyone, you can just lay down first. Bring your hands under the body. Don't start with the bent elbows. Do not start with the bent elbows, remember. Bring your hands under the body. Push your elbows in four rounds. Lift your chest, then bend your neck. And then 
can stay here. Those who want some variation here, legs can be off the floor. And then relax very slowly. Coming back, release your neck, relax your arms. Have your knees to the chest one time. Side, just to release your spinal muscles. Though the side rolling can stretch your neck muscles, the good name is tenocladiomastoid. When you drop your head and let it roll, it really helps you to stretch and feel good in the neck, back, and then slowly you relax down. Supatarasana so one time, just a good stretch, just a good stretch, stretch. Stretch and then relax. To have a good neck stretch, you bend your knee, everyone, maybe, and then you just push your chest slightly more higher up in the same line, like not lifting away from the floor. From here, maybe you can just lift the, uh, just turn the neck, or you shouldn't be doing like that. Chin up should not be a good option. So chin tuck down. So that when you push through the feet, like body pushing slightly upward, it really gives a good stretch to the trapezius. And then you let go your legs, your arms, your shoulders. It's time for Shavasana. And you just surrender now. Gently close your eyes. Drop your shoulders, drop your legs. And deep breathe. Deep inhalations and exhalations. Comfortable inhalations and exhalations. Let me go and surrender. Feel your body completely relaxed. Feel your body completely relaxed. And no more active zone. Complete surrender. Complete surrender. And feel that your whole body is relaxing. From toe to head. Your whole body is relaxing. Your legs, your arms, your whole spine completely relaxed. Let me go. Surrender. Feel this relaxation, completely detached, your body and mind. Completely detached, your body and mind, and just let go yourself, complete surrender. Allow yourself to be easy. Non reaction is a key in Shavasana. You were reacting, you were stretching, you were releasing. Now it's time for your heart and nerves to be relaxed. In order to pay attention, complete once again if you want. Pay attention to the legs. From hip to the toes. The whole, all the joints, the legs, lower body is completely relaxed. Your toes, your ankles, your calves, your knees, your thighs, they are completely relaxed. If your pelvis feels good and surrender, your sacrum, your lower back, let your hips to be completely relaxed at the same time. Let your lower back, now your spine from tailbone to neck, from lower back to neck. Lower back mostly takes tension. All the stress of our life, all the stressful job, all the body stress, it stores there such a time to release the lumber. 
Each vertebrae has to be relaxed. Just surrender them. And you will observe when you relax in the lower back, your abdomen also relaxes at the same time. So enjoy that relaxation too. Surrender the easiness. Now feel and observe your upper back, your thoracic area, your chest region, your ribs, your lungs, your heart. Let them relax. Try not to react. Try not to move. And let them surrender yourself. Then surrender your shoulders, surrender your elbows, your biceps, your triceps, your wrist especially. The forearms are always tense, they work a lot. It's time for me to try to be relaxed. Pay attention to your neck, your throat. Throat is the key of body relaxation. If you can manage to relax your throat, it relaxes the whole body more. Then bring your awareness to your face, your head, the top of your head. Observe and enjoy your whole body is fully relaxed. Your whole body is fully relaxed. Notice your physical body, your energy body, and mental body too are relaxed. Your body, mind, and soul both feel happy and relaxed. It's happy and relaxed. I feel safe and secure. I feel good. I feel happy and relaxed. And what is this inside? Start enjoying your awareness and lightness into the body. Start breathing deep. Enjoy the present time. Choose to do the longer Travasana if you want to. Otherwise, start bringing your awareness back in your physical body with the fresh inhalations. Deeper inhalations and feel lightness into the whole body with each breath. Each breath is bringing freshness and lightness into the body. And slowly, slowly start moving your fingers and toes. Moving your arms. Gently movement in your body. Keeping your eyes closed. Observe yourself. Enjoy your present time. Easy movement which makes you feel fresh, active and alive. 
any kind of stretching, bending, twisting, yawning that you feel like having it. And then slowly turn to the side. Keeping your legs close. You come up in a sitting position. Sit in any comfortable position. And then head say Namaste. Reach our home together two times. Breathe in. Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavant Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kashit Dukkha Bhavavi Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Vrityorma Amritam Gamaya Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Pay thanks to your God for giving you healthy and happy life. Pray for your health and happiness, your family, friends, health and happiness. Among the dear friends. Feel the warm palms, warmthness in the palms. And then rest them on your eyes. And by loving your whole body, you lower your hands down. 